about you here. Hello and welcome to Extra Connections. I'm your host, James Law Jr. And I just want to tell you, it's my one-year anniversary of doing this show. And I want to thank you guys for uh, listening today and listening at wherever you're listening to this. But November 24th is when I started this journey in 2016 um, to do this particular podcast. It's my latest podcast. I'm so, I'm so like, can't believe it's been a year. Uh, it's been it's just, I mean, it goes by so fast. The show was grown out of a radio show that I used to do in 2016 called Community Connections. That show is coming back. Um, and But while that show went on in hiatus that was indefinite, I decided to keep the show going in some form, but I didn't feel, I was doing it on the radio, I was doing it as a podcast, and I didn't feel like I should do the full Community Connection show. So I decided to do I call the spinoff called Extra Connections. That would be a little similar, but yet different than that show. Hold some of the same kind of tenets of that show, something different. And uh, and it, it just grew into its own presence. <laughs> um, and this year just exploded. So now we are our own podcast. Uh, and you can listen to some pot on iTunes and SoundCloud and iTunes and YouTube, excuse me, iTunes and Speaker.com, so I get that out. And I'm working on getting it on, if somebody, you can listen to somebody who's on YouTube, I'm working to get it on iHeartRadio. I mean, I'm really looking to expand it for the next year, really expand it. But I just really, I just want to thank from the bottom of my heart um, for people that have come on the show, supported the show, PR people who sent me guests for the show. All my guests for the show, they've been just extraordinary in all their fields and fields of expertise. I just am so happy. And I just really feel that this should go on for a long time. Because I said this is the best guest. And I have a really good guest today for the one-year anniversary. So we will talk about that in a second. Um, but I just want to say thank you. And so that you just never know what you will start, where it will end up. Or let me tell you, let me rephrase that. You know what? You shall start what path it will go down and where it will take you. You just never know. Just try something. And even if it's, and I'd say, again, it was, for me, it was out of kind of fun. Um, it's now turned into something that I can help affect change in the world. So thank you very much for this one year um, uh, anniversary. So, everybody here on, on Extra Connections, my, my guest today is, is esteemed and on, I mean, he just, he is doing lots of work in terms of the uh, cardiovascular work and uh, coronary work. He, he is a PhD, MD, he is a leading cardiologist and heart transplant cardiologist. Uh, many of you guys know that I actually had on one of my other shows, I talked to a woman who had a heart transplant from Cedar sinai So, this is a, this is a timely, timely topic. We're going to talk about how you can have a heart attack without chest pain. Imagine that you uh, out there. This is especially for the women out there. I have a lot of female listeners. This is for the women. This is for the men who have women in their lives. This is very important information for you guys to, to listen to. Um, as many of you know who follow me, I lost my grandmother to heart failure recently. Lost my brother to heart failure recently. Even my dog. So the heart is very important. And... There's not just one way to have symptoms any, anymore about when it comes to actual heart attacks and heart disease. So I'm very honored to have my this doctor on my show, Dr. Ernst von Schwartz. How are you doing, Dr. von Schwartz? Well, thank you, James. Thanks for having me. I'm good. good. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Very good. Um, you know, when I, when I first saw... But it came across my desk. Um, we were getting, you know, getting guests on the show, and, you're, and you came across my desk. And the title was, You Can Have a Heart Attack Without Chest Pain. I was like, oh. And, and I know, and I know because I said I, I used to be a nurse, I know a few things. That, but I actually learned a lot. I want you to talk about this, of course. Um, one in four women actually have heart disease in America these days. Is, is that, is that kind of, it's one in four? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the majority of all of us actually will develop sooner or later heart disease. And in the past, it has been always a disease of the elderly. But now we see, especially among women, much more younger women with heart disease. My my brother uh, died last year, heart disease. He was 47, had a heart attack. Oh, 
my God. I'm and sorry to hear that. Thank you. And seemingly, I mean, seemingly healthy. I mean, he, uh, he went to the gym every day and did all that kind of stuff. So I'm learning personally that the ages are getting younger and younger um, when it comes to having heart issues. So that part, I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not that surprised. Um, I was looking at the research, and there's two most common. There are two common forms of heart disease that affect women, and so which, which are the two forms? Well, uh, the first one is uh, what we call coronary artery disease, which means um, there's a blockage of the arteries, especially in the heart, caused by calcification often as a result of high blood pressure, diabetes, um, eating, smoking habits, but also a family history. Mm-hmm. And the other uh, big entity is what we call heart failure, or commonly known as congestive heart failure, which in fact does affect much more women now, um, especially after heart uh, attacks, um, because people survive heart attacks much more frequently yeah. than 20 years ago, but also in young women without coronary disease. Wow. So that's like scary a little bit there. It's like, wow. I, um, you also you mentioned some research about broken heart syndrome, which everybody kept saying that Debbie Reynolds must have felt after her, the death of her daughter, Carrie Fisher. So that, that's something that's kind of real, isn't it? With the emotional stress and everything, right? Yeah, well, the broken heart syndrome is, as you know, is not a medical terminology. Right, right. Medical terminology is actually stress cardiomyopathy or Takatsubo cardiomyopathy. And that is a disease, you're absolutely right, James, which uh, affects mainly women, middle-aged women, and has nothing to do with coronary disease or diabetes or high blood pressure, but can affect any one, especially women, after any kind of stress that could be mechanical stress after any kind of abdominal surgery, but also psychological stress can cause it. Wow, that's that's a, you know, our mind is very powerful, I and mean, that's something that's you know, they all they all have the brain and the heart all work you know together, don't they? Absolutely, absolutely, and the interesting thing about that, what uh, we call broken heart syndrome, is if it's. Um, if it's if it's early enough recognized um, and aggressively treated, it's often completely reversible. But there's other cases where people die. Actually, I saw, believe it or not, just a week ago, a, a woman who was supposed to undergo a plastic surgery procedure and was so anxious before that and was so uh, excited in a negative way that she did develop Um, what we call the broken heart syndrome, with the whole spectrum of signs and symptoms and failing heart, and uh, actually that uh, poor lady died as a result of it. So it needs to be recognized early, and it needs to be treated aggressively, but it's completely different than a heart attack. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. No, that's, 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 wow, that's, that's amazing. Um, Now, so some of the, so, because now we're mentioning you can have, a heart attack or have heart failure without this, the typical tingling of the arm and the, and a tightening of the chest. So what are some other things that people can feel that might be leading to towards a heart attack? Especially for women. Yeah, you're for women. absolutely right, James. Especially in women, we see what we call more and more atypical symptoms. So the classical symptoms, as you know, for a heart attack is this crushing pain in the chest, often going to the left arm. Yes. But um, 30% of heart attacks are even what we call silent heart attacks, meaning there's no symptoms whatsoever. In women, we have um, a whole litany of different what we would call non-specific symptoms, and they can uh, range from just feeling extremely weak and fatigued to sleeping problems, to feeling depressed, to having shortness of breath, especially with little activity. Oftentimes women come to come to us and tell us, doctor, I just don't feel right. I can't do what I want to do on a daily basis. Mm. I cannot even go upstairs to clean my rooms anymore. Wow. Now, I want to ask you about the fatigue part because there's also, in recent, the last 10, 15 years, um, we've also discovered new um, syndromes due to fatigue, too. So how do you kind of... Because I'm blanking on the one that... The, oh, my God, I'm blanking on the one that that's kind of uh, people have. Um, but there's I mean, how do people kind of discern between I'm just really tired because I do 20,000 things and get very little sleep as opposed to... This fatigue is actually leading towards heart failure. 
You're absolutely right, James. So that's actually the tricky part. So yeah. the majority of, of women who walk into my office, in fact, uh, complain about being fatigued and, and feeling weak. And it doesn't mean that everybody has heart disease or heart failure. Yeah. But as I said earlier, in women, if we hear these kind of symptoms, it's only it's, it's always wise to at least check the heart, okay. meaning to do an ex, uh, an, a physical examination, oftentimes at least an EKG and eventually okay. even an echo to evaluate the function and the strength of the heart. Oh, okay, I mean, that makes sense. That's why it's like, still it's preventative. You feel you're tired. Now we have another thing to kind of look for, yeah, another additional thing to look for just in case. That makes That's sense. Correct, yes. um, some of the things that I'm, I mean, you can tell me if I'm correct. Some of the things that you can sometimes you can have are neck, jaw, shoulder, upper back, and abdominal discomfort, shortness of breath, which is never good anyway. If shortness of breath, you should be in the hospital anyway, getting checked out. Um, pain in one or both arms, nausea, vomiting, sweating, lightheadedness or dizziness, and unusual fatigue. So some of these, yeah, I can see some of these actually. St some of these still fall under. I think to me, kind of like okay, something's going on with the heart. You know, shortness of breath, pain in both arms. Like those, those sound like you know. But nausea and vomiting and sweating. But I guess the sweating too is kind of that too. I guess. Yeah, you're right, James. So oftentimes uh, these women go to. Uh, uh the healthcare providers and complain about these non-specific symptoms, especially like abdominal pain, like you mentioned. And usually the doctor won't think if he hears abdominal pain about the heart, but keep in mind that blockages, especially of the right coronary artery, which is one of the arteries in the heart, often can project pain into the upper epigastric area, meaning the stomach. So it doesn't mean they have to have chest pain, but more often abdominal pain. So again, not every abdominal pain means heart disease, but it could theoretically. Yeah. Another thing um, you mentioned also before, jaw pain. That's something we see very frequently. That's interesting. People just feel something in their throat and in their jaws. And the first thought is never about the heart, but in fact, it should be about the heart. Mm. So jaw pain. So what I mean, how, okay, so explain to me a little bit how's that connect? I mean, how does that seem to be connected in your studies? Well, keep in mind what causes the pain uh, in uh, patients with coronary artery disease is lack of oxygen in the heart. And uh, this lack of oxygen basically causes um, a stimulation of the nerves surrounding and uh, innervating the heart. And those nerves innervate other portions of the body, including the neck, including the jaw, and often the shoulders and the arms. So as I said, the classical chest pain is, is, is a frequent finding, but especially in women, it is um, more the atypical symptoms, shortness of breath, jaw pain, pain in the shoulders, abdominal pain, which should lead us as physicians to further examinations of the heart. Wow, that's just, that's, I mean, I get, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you, we feel atypical, period. I guess the, 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 what you glean from this is go get checked out. I guess that is the, the, over, the overlying message, right? You feel. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Especially keep in mind that if someone has a classical risk factors like diabetes or high blood pressure, then we, we tend to think about heart for any kind of symptoms. But more and more in younger women, we, we see no risk factors for heart disease, but those atypical symptoms. And we have seen uh, lots of women who present really in extreme condition then because um, the initial diagnosis was either not made or falsely made. And uh, there's unfortunately often a delay in the appropriate treatment for women. Yeah, I know. Because especially I mean, as, as we know, Many women are busy, and they're running around, and they're taking care of the kids and spouses, and many have jobs. Many are busy at home, being, you know, being house managers, taking care of the house, and running and your soccer practice five times a week with this kid. And, and I know a lot of, a lot of people, women I talk to, are like, well, I'm, just, I'm, just always, I'm always tired, or I always have a pain in my arm, or I always have, and I'm always like, go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. It doesn't matter. Go to the doctor. It's still, it's still not normal feeling that way. Um, find out, right? No, no procrastination. Find out. So, because you said there's many advances these days on preventative, you know, measures, right, for heart conditions. 
Absolutely, James. I agree with you. And there's nothing wrong with go to going to the doctors over and over again if you have certain symptoms, <clears throat> because there, there's nothing wrong with having yourself checked out. I agree. And it's always better to do that preventively and early when symptoms occur uh, rather than ending up in an emergency room in an extreme condition with a failing heart. I agree. Dr. Von Schwartz, thanks for being on the show. You are a wealth of knowledge, and I'm glad that you're putting this out there for women and, like I said, and people who have women in their lives to take a closer look at their lives. Thank you very much, uh, James, for having me on any time. It was a pleasure. You guys, it's Dr. Ernst Von Schwartz, and he is a board certified cardiologist and internist. Um, now, you're at Cedar Sinai, correct, here in Southern California? Yeah, I'm at Cedars, and I'm at Loma Linda University and the Southern California Hospital in Cobra City, so we have several offices, yes. All good, all good places, all good places, you guys, good places. So thank you. Thank you, James. Okay. Again, that was your one-year anniversary of Extra Connections here on iTunes or Speaker.com, where we're listening to this app. I am so excited to have, um, have this show. I'm going to continue this show as long as I can. As long as it, it makes it makes sense to continue, as long as you guys say you want it, uh, please share this episode. You guys, you can tell on any of the episodes with anybody you know who feels they need to know this information. Uh, I want people to live longer lives and healthier lives, and the heart is very important. Um, so I want people to really look at their hearts much, much more and and take care of them. I'm doing the same thing for myself. Taking my own advice, doing the same thing for myself. There are places that do heart screening checks um, for like. 200 to like I think $500 so that you can actually go in and get a full screening. Um, I will try to see if I can find the ones that I know of and post them so you get a starting place on the page at your connections on Facebook. Uh, and uh, you totally um, go and you get EKGs and a car, you're going to get all kinds of stuff so you get a whole, you get a whole sense of what's going on with your heart and the arteries in that region. And, and again, if anything shows up, preventative, take care of it. I appreciate you with all of my heart, and I will talk to you guys next time.